i want to share some perspectives on solving different types of problems ones that by not seeing them as types of problems actually becomes an impediment to leveraging all the skills that we've learned through effective problem solving and bring them to life through the type these types of problems so you know one way to just simply uh, define problem solving is that we're, we're doing a gap to standard. We're trying to close a gap to standard. The target state is that we have a standard uh, that we've established and that we're expected to perform to. And our current state is not at that same point. And so we have this gap that we have to close. And so then we, we, we understand, we go do some root cause and cause and effect and develop solutions. And we, you know, we claw our way back to getting back to to that standard. So in a lot of ways, you know, the, having these these gaps to standard uh, is is what problem solving is all about. And that's sort of the front door, right? The, the problem statement. I like to say that all problem solving is some kind of gap to standard, whether it's, you know, could be not just a performance gap, but a strategic gap, an emotional gap could be anything. But if there's a gap, then we have to learn our way through closing that gap. And that's what problem solving ultimately is about. So what about other types of problems? Um, so, so one thing that in continuous improvement we love to talk about is waste identification and elimination. And so often we look at that as an alternative effort, an alternative pathway to improvement is we wanna go around finding waste, eliminating waste. Um, but I believe that once we do that, then we, we don't know what skills to bring. Um, and so we approach it in many ways, just with sort of some brute force. We throw some ideas at the waste and, and go about it. But I would argue it very much is a gap to standard. So what is our, what is our standard, uh, when it comes to waste? Uh, well, our, our standard is zero waste, right? That's, that's what we're trying to achieve. That's the expectation, that's the goal, that's the, the standard. You know, again, we may never achieve it. We may never close that entire gap. I don't say may never, we will never close that entire gap to zero, but that's our gap, uh, zero waste. And, uh, you know, our current state is we, we found some waste, right? So we found some waste, that's not, that, that waste existing is not our standard. That's now our gap, that's now our problem statement is that we found waste uh, that should not be there, right? Now, you know, then once we do that, we can and see it as a problem statement. I don't think you have to write it in the same uh, structure and nomenclature as a problem statement. You can use an A3, you don't have to use an A3. It's just seeing it as a gap. And once you see it as a gap and you see it as a problem that the occurrence of that waste is a problem uh, uh, statement, you can bring all the skills that you would bring to uh, any other type of problem, right? So you can go off and, you know, understand cause and effect. You know, one of the beautiful things about waste is that the seven types of waste specifically, it's not the only uh, language that we used for waste, but the seven types of waste uh, are observable conditions, right? You can see the occurrence. Uh, you can see it as an outcome or a symptom of a cause, right? And so that's really what we're trying to do. We can, uh, we can do things like test to learn as we uh, develop solutions and see, you know, does this really actually eliminate the waste? So, so fundamentally when we see it, uh, and I don't care if you pull out A3s or not, but when we see the occurrence of waste, we have a problem statement. And going about to push through that waste and eliminate it is, is fundamentally an act of problem solving. And the better we can see it that way, the more flexible we can come to bring different skills to bear to go about uh, solving that gap. Just another to, to help make my point is, uh, you know, we like to say it's it, problem solving is gap to standard. So what if we don't have a standard, right? So, you know, the goal is to have a standard. Uh, so that's, that's our expectation. Um, and the current state in some cases is we just don't. So a you know, very binary, uh, binary problem statement or gap. So, you know, we often say, uh, you know, problem solving 
has to occur after we have standardization, but you still have a gap. You still have a gap. So people identify that they don't have a standard, and then they're still stuck about how they go about developing that standard. Now, you know, you're not going to do things like root cause because the root cause of not having a standard, you know, that's useful if you're trying to solve an organizational gap of a low rate of standardization, right? You don't have standards in many places. You're trying to understand why there's an organizational resistance or lack of investment in standardization. But, you know, why does this standard not exist? That's not really a root cause. You know, what we're really looking for there is, you know, we're trying to find, we're still trying to find cause and effect, right? We're still trying to test the standards. A test to learn is a skill or capability from problem solving that has a lot to bear on the development of the standard itself. So when we see lack of standardization or lack of a standard as a problem statement or gap, when we see waste existence as a gap, we can start to look at that gap from a problem solving lens and bring the full breadth of problem solving skills to bear on overcoming that gap. So I hope this enlightens a little bit about how you see different types of problems. We could go much deeper into strategic gaps, but we'll save that for another day. And I wish you the best on your problem solving journey.